Namaste and a very, very good evening to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithu. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to create a quadrant analysis map using Excel. I repeat, how do we create a quadrant analysis map using Excel? Even before I proceed to demonstrate how to create a quadrant analysis map using Excel, may I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. Let me begin by introducing you to the data set. This is a very simple data set which talks about staff and their performance. You have the first field, which is employee ID. The name of the employee is also given. The overall cost that is incurred because of the employee is given. This is the third column. And finally, I have performance of each and every employee. Performance is measured on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest, 1 being the lowest. If you look at the first employee, his ID is 1, his name is Darren, his overall cost is 10,859 units, and his performance is 1. If you look at Brosina, his performance is 11,709, and his performance is 2. Similarly, you've got 10 employees. Suppose you want to classify employees as highly productive or low productive. How do you do this? It becomes very, very difficult. This is where a quadrant analysis map comes to our rescue because using a quadrant analysis map, we can segment the employees into four groups. What are these groups? How do we interpret these groups? I'm going to talk about all these things in this video, but firstly, Let's look at how do we create a quadrant analysis map. The first step here is to create a scatter plot. I repeat, you can go ahead and create a simple scatter plot. To create a scatter plot, you need two scale variables. The first scale variable is overall cost, and the second one is performance of the employee. Using these two variables, namely overall cost and performance of the employee, I'm going to create a scatter plot. Let me click on the menu. You can see here there are different options in the Excel menu. I will choose insert. Within insert under the section of charts, you have different charts. I can go ahead and select a simple scatter plot. The moment I click on scatter, you have different formats for scatter. I'll go ahead and create a simple scatter plot. So this is how a simple scatter plot would look like. Let me go ahead and resize this. You can see here in the Y axis, we are taking performance and in the X axis, we are taking overall cost. Let me go ahead and get rid of the grid lines here. Right. So far, we have just started with the first step of creating a quadrant analysis map. The first step, as I told you, is a scatter. Now, there are four, there are in fact three very good friends that we have, which allows us to control the properties of the scatter plot. Let me go ahead and select the scatter plot. You can see here at the top right hand corner, you have what is called as chart elements. When you click on this plus icon, the chart elements displays different options. By default, axis is selected. What I want to do is select the axis titles. The moment I select axis title, what you see here is Excel is asking me to provide a name for the Y axis. In this case, it is performance. You have performance. I'll go ahead and type performance. And in the x-axis, I can go ahead and type overall cost. As far as the chart title is concerned, you can just call this as staff productivity analysis. Now, we have laid the foundation for 
a quadrant analysis map by creating a scatter plot. What is the second step? The second step is to shift the position of the horizontal axis. Right now it is at zero. I wish to move this to the position of six. The same way, I want to shift the position of the vertical axis somewhere halfway through so that it cuts the horizontal axis somewhere at the center of the horizontal axis. How do we shift the position of the y-axis and the x-axis? To shift the position of the y-axis, select the y-axis. Once you select it, go ahead and right click. Let me do this again. I'm going to select the y-axis, right click on this. You can see here, there's a menu that is being displayed. The last option here is what is called as format access. This option, format access, allows you to format the y-axis. Let me hit on format access. So this is the dialog box which I will be using to format the y-axis. You can see here, it says horizontal axis crosses. By default, Excel has chosen automatic. I will choose a customized value, that is the axis value. You can see here, this is the horizontal axis, that is overall cost. It is crossing zero. I can specify any value as far as the axis value is concerned. A reasonable value would be to look at the maximum of y-axis and divide it by two. What is the maximum value of y? It is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So the axis value that I will be specifying here would be 6. I can go ahead and hit enter. You can see here the horizontal axis has now jumped to the value of 6. So it is cutting the y-axis at y equals 6. I will be doing the same thing, but this time I want the vertical axis to cut the horizontal axis. To do this, please select the horizontal axis. You can see here, I've selected the horizontal axis. I'm still working on format axis. You can see here, vertical axis crosses. You can specify a customized value by choosing the second option here called as axis value. Look at the maximum value of X axis, it is 35,000. So you can just divide 35,000 by two, which is 17,500. So I will be choosing 17,500 as the value here. I'll close this window. Now you can see here, both the Y axis as well as the X axis has changed its position. What has this resulted in? This has resulted in breaking the entire scatter plot into four portions. You can see here at the top left hand side corner, you have quadrant one. At the right hand side top corner, you have a region wherein you have three different circles. This region represents quadrant two. Similarly, at the left hand side bottom corner, you have quadrant three. And at the right hand side bottom corner, you have quadrant number four. For visibility purpose, what I'd like to do is, I'd like to further go ahead and change the thickness of the line. Not just the thickness, I'd like to also change the color of the line. How do I do this? Simply select the horizontal axis, right click. You can use the option format axis. Once you choose format axis, make sure that you have clicked on axis options. Under access options, you have four different options. I'll choose the very first option which says fill and line. You can see here, the first portion is fill and the second portion is line. This will allow you to control the thickness of the line as well as specify the color of the line. Under the color section, I can click on the drop down menu. I will choose red color. You can see here, now the color of the horizontal axis has changed. For better visibility, I'm going to change the width of the horizontal axis to 2.25. You can see here, the horizontal axis is more striking. It is more conspicuous now. I can go ahead and repeat the same process 
for the y axis as well under the color section again i'm going to choose red under the width i can go ahead and increase it to 2.25 let me close this your quadrant analysis is ready everything is okay except that i need to make a small change here what is the small change you can see here you have different circles each of these circles represents the value of performance and cost for a particular employee. But I have to hover the mouse on each and every circle to see the description of this particular data point. In other words, the label is missing. I would like to display the employee name for each and every circle here. How do I do this? Firstly, you can select on the data points. At the right hand side top corner, you have chart elements. You can go ahead and choose chart elements. Chart elements lists a menu here with different options. I'll go ahead and choose the fourth option, namely data labels. You can see here, the moment I click on data labels on top of every circle, you can see the value of performance being highlighted. You can see here numbers like 9, 8, and 7. This is not the employee ID. This is not the employee ID. This is the performance of the employee. Do I want to choose? Do I want to see the performance? No. I want to see the employee name corresponding to each and every circle here. So how do I change this to employee name? Pretty simple. You can select the data label here right click on this the last option here is format data labels i repeat the last item here is format data labels once i choose this you can go ahead and select the first item here which says value from labels the moment you select value from labels a new window a small window which is called as data label range window appears. Here Excel says, select the data range label. Here in this section, I can select the name of the employees. There are 10 employees. So I'm going to go ahead and select this particular range. You can see here, the range appears here. Here I'm going to click on OK. Once I click on OK, you can see here, the names of the employees are appearing. You can see numbers next to each and every employee. That is because you've also selected Y value. You can go ahead and remove the Y value and show leader line. I'm going to just go ahead and select value from cells. Now let me go ahead and close format data labels. This is how the quadrant analysis map appears. I know it's a bit crowded here, so it might not be very easy for us to visualize this. So what I've done is I've copy pasted the same graph in sheet two for better comprehension. Let me go to sheet two here. So this is the same graph that you were seeing in the earlier sheet, except that I have made it more. I have I have uh, made it more clear so that uh, we can easily understand who belongs to which quadrant. You can see here, there are different employees here. Sean is the first employee. You also see the next employee, Eric. Both of these employees belong to quadrant one. Now, how do we recognize quadrant one? You can see here, quadrant one represents low cost. X-axis value is low here. Y-axis value is high here. Y-axis value is performance and X-axis value is cost here. So quadrant one represents all those employees who have a low cost but high performance, right? These are high performing employees and you incur very low cost because of these employees. So these are your best employees. So employees, Sean, Eric, they are very, very good employees. They're an asset to the company because on lower cost, they're performing extremely good. Now, let me draw your attention to quadrant two. You have three employees here, Zuskus, then you have Andrew and Pete. 
Now, these three employees belong to quadrant two. What is the characteristic of quadrant two? You can see here, performance is high, y-axis is high, and x-axis is also high. So I'm calling them as high cost, high performing employees. So quadrant two represents all those employees who are high cost, high performance. So Andrew, Pete, and Zuskas, these guys are high cost and high performance employees. While the fact that they are high performing employees is desirable, the fact that they are also high cost employees is undesirable. So this is a group which involves further analysis. Now let's focus on the third quadrant, left hand side, bottom corner. You can see here, Brosina Hoffman, you can also see Darren Van Huff. So when you look at Darren Van Huff, as well as Brosina Hoffman, these are people who belong to quadrant number three. What is their characteristic? Low cost, low performance. I repeat, low cost and low performance. Here, the fact that you incur low cost is a desirable characteristic, but they are low performing employees that is undesirable. So it could be that they are freshers, they're newly come into the system and therefore they do not know the job well and therefore they are not really high performing employees. What you need to do is you need to give them further training. You need to improve their skills so that they can improve the performance. So this is as far as quadrant three is concerned. Let me now focus on quadrant number four. When you look at quadrant number four, who are the employees? Irene and Sandra. So these two are employees who belong to quadrant number four. What is the feature of quadrant number four? You can see here, their performance is low and cost is high. So Irene and Sandra, high cost and low performing employees. These are two employees who are high cost and low performing employees. So both of these are undesirable features. High cost, you're paying them a lot and low performance, which is again, a reflection of their poor performance. So it is best that you let go of this section of employees. So you can see here how insightful this particular graph is, that is quadrant analysis. I know that I've taken a very small data set here, just for the sake of interpretation, I've taken 10 employees. In a real time scenario, you may have uh, 50 or 60 employees and if you want to classify 50, 60, or a higher number of employees, you can get rich insights about who is a high performing employee and who is a low performing employee. Additionally, you can also look at their cost. So this is how quadrant analysis is useful to solve very, very complex analysis. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. In today's video, we've looked at how to create a quadrant analysis. We have looked at how to interpret the quadrants as well. I request you to subscribe to my channel. Also like and share my videos. Thank you very much for watching this video. Have a great day ahead.